On the night of the 24th of August, 2001, a fully loaded Airbus A330 with 306 people on board ran out of fuel midway over the Atlantic. How could a state-of-the-art computerized airliner suffer such a catastrophic failure? Mayday, mayday, mayday. We have lost both engines due to fuel starvation. We are gliding now. Well, we're now at 30,000 feet at the rate of descent of 2,000 feet per minute. We have to ditch in the water. Can you put on your life jackets right now? This film investigates what happened to Air Transat Flight 236. This is it. This is it's over. They're just going to die in the next five to ten minutes. And the speed's increasing, 203 knots now. It's way too fast. Everybody, I need you to break. Oh, my Third, 2001, Toronto's International Airport is busy. Air Transat is a charter company that has grown rapidly to become one of the largest airlines in Canada. Midsummer brings fewer business travelers and a holiday atmosphere. Air Transat Flight 236 is bound for Lisbon. Most of the passengers are Canadians visiting Europe or Portuguese immigrants heading home. The plane, a twin-engined Airbus A330, is being flown by a young co-pilot, Dirk de Jager, and an experienced captain, Robert Pichet. Captain Robert Pichet is somewhat out of the ordinary. Captain Pichet, from the moment he gets his wing, he gets to learn how to fly in the uh, north of uh, the province of Quebec, where the conditions occasionally are very severe. The flight deck of the A330 is ultra-modern. Banks of computers connected to over a hundred onboard sensors constantly monitor the operation of the plane. This film reveals how serious problems can arise when the pilots get unusual readings from the computers and begin to distrust them. On this night, the computers assist the smooth takeoff of Flight 236. On Romeo and hold short on two four right. Roger, follow A320 Air Canada, left on Romeo and hold short of 24 right. With the crew of 13, Flight 236 has 306 people on board. Zero at eight, cleared for takeoff, two four right, transat, two thirty six heavy. At 10 minutes past eight, the Airbus A330, loaded with over 47 tons of fuel, left Toronto for Lisbon. V1, rotate. The weather forecast for the Atlantic crossing is good. Everything runs smoothly on the flight deck, apart from a small adjustment to the route. To avoid congestion, air traffic control directs the flight 60 miles south of its original route. It's a minor alteration, but will play a crucial role later. Passengers settle down for the long crossing. Everything appeared quite normal, and in fact, um, I had traveled on Air Transat previously and found it not to be very good, and was surprised by the quality of the flight, that you know, it was on time, the plane was newer, and we thought generally it was much better than we had expected it would be. We're getting to our next checkpoint. Every 30 minutes across the Atlantic, the crew check their position and fuel consumption against their flight plan. 0.2 tons on the right. 
11.2 tons on the left. Despite the computerized systems, some procedures like checking the fuel on board still need to be done by hand. Tons. By comparing the amount of fuel in the tanks with the amount the flight started with, the pilots can keep an eye on their fuel consumption. Fuel check complete. Level's normal for the distance flow. All right. For the first five hours, everything is routine. The flight crew, Air Transat, and accident investigators have all declined to be interviewed about what happened next. This film uses known facts about the flight standard emergency procedures and expert opinion to reconstruct what took place on flight 236. Look, we're getting a warning signal. Oil temp low and oil pressure high on number two. This warning is the first step in the crisis. Oil pressure is when the normal limits on number one, number two is slightly high. The computer display reveals that the oil temperature is low in engine number two, but the oil pressure is high. It is a very unusual reading. The pilots are puzzled. I can't see anything here. I'll look in the FCOM. Okay. A low oil temperature indication is normally in indicative of, of bad readings and bad sensor. Uh, oil temperatures don't decrease normally, they increase. A low oil temperature would, would be of no concern. The high oil pressure is, uh, is a very strange indication. Uh, it's, it's very rare. In fact, I've never actually heard of one. It's only indicative of the contamination normally of the oil with fuel. Uh, that's not something that's explained in the manuals. Call the company. The crew contact Air Transat's maintenance group in Montreal. Transat 236 to Mirabel Operations. Mirabel Transat 236. Hi. Hi, we have a little problem. We're getting the warning oil temp low and oil pressure high on the ECAM for engine number two. There's nothing in the QRH nor the FCOM. Can you help us out? I'm looking in the manual. The ground crew have no immediate solution. The pilots must work it out themselves. They may have been given some advice uh, on, on troubleshooting uh, to see um, if that would help. But ultimately, uh, you know, the pilots are up there on their own. Uh, you know, they can get advice from somebody 2,500 miles away, but they can't really fix their problems. Suggest you keep monitoring your oil levels and see what happens. But because the oil readings are so unusual, the pilots believe they may indicate a computer error. The crew keep monitoring the oil levels. Air Transat 236 continues on track. Then, 20 minutes later, a new warning. Fuel imbalance warning. Haven't seen that before. Follow all ECAM action. I have air traffic control. In the Airbus 330, most of the fuel is in large tanks in the wings. The computer has now detected that the fuel level on the right is now significantly lower than the left. The crew consults the Airbus flight manual, which recommends they transfer fuel through the special cross-feed valve. Fuel will then flow from one tank to the other. But before opening the cross-feed, the pilots must be sure that the imbalance is not caused by a more serious problem, such as a fuel leak. Last fuel check was only 15 minutes ago and it was okay. No indication of a fuel leak. Keep going. Wing cross-feed. On. On. Once you begin a cross-feeding procedure to correct a fuel imbalance, uh, restorative action should commence quite quickly. Uh, in other words, the situation would not continue to, uh, to get worse. It would, it would either stabilize immediately